Hello everyone, I'm Rishi Passant and welcome back to Racing Weekly, a podcast and YouTube show brought to you by Odds Checker in association with Bet365. Two fabulous guests alongside me, Sam Tenner obviously in his usual spot on the left-hand side of midfield, uh, Steve Mellish playing the Casemiro role, no hands around the throat. Role. Yeah. Defensive midfielder. Defensive midfielder. Yeah, midfielder. I have considered you more of an attacking midfielder. No, 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 no. I haven't got the pace for it. Not anymore. You saw the Jan no, Norby role. It was never. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'd be more Paul Scholes, stuck out on the left wing and absolutely pointless playing him there. <laughs> <laughs> Can I be Andre Kanchelskis? If you like. Wasn't he, wasn't he quick? What? <laughs> Still, still, there's a little bit of fire left in me. Is there? Yeah, yeah. I don't let that fool you. These okay. aging looks. Um, Steve, <laughs> yes, I was saying on the weekend how much I'm enjoying the current time of the year. The dark month of January is done and dusted, mm-hmm. and we have got we had very good racing on the weekend, which obviously we'll be talking about later on in the show. And there's lots of good racing still coming up. Obviously Cheltenham, then Aintree, and then the summer's here. I think it's a nice time of the year, isn't it? Yeah, if I could live. Three months of the year, mine would be March, April, May. For and, and but the good thing about February, one, it's near March, <laughs> it's nearer than and also we're starting to talk about the things I'm looking forward to. So yeah. I'm sort of agreeing with you, but it's it's sort of substitute for what is really good. Yeah, it's around the corner. You've already got your eye on the Masters as well, probably, haven't you? Are you going out there to conduct no, any ceremonies? I don't think so. That's another subject: television rights and uh-huh. life, so. Mm. Under negotiation with your wife as well, no doubt. <laughs> <laughs> we know how that ends. There's only one winner in that. Yep. Um, how much are you enjoying uh, what you're seeing at the moment, Sam? Oh, um, well, I love the weekend. I was, I was fortunate enough to be at Leopardstown, um, watched some brilliant racing, dominated by one stable. But we knew that going into the meeting. Mm. Wasn't always the results that you expected them to be, so there was a little bit of uh, intrigue there. Um you know, one or two interesting post-race interviews as well, where yeah. Willie wasn't shy in mm. criticising. Mm. Um, so there, there was a bit of everything for everyone. I thought we saw some exhilarating performances on the track as well. Yeah, there's a lot to chat about. The Dublin Racing Festival, one of the things. We'll also be looking ahead to Newbury this weekend, their big race, the Betfair Hurdle. Uh, and we'll also have a look at the Champion Chase. That's the race in focus at the Cheltenham Festival. But before we do all of that... Big news coming out that Racing Weekly are going to have a live show on Monday, the 6th of March at the George Pub in Chiswick. Uh, I'll be there, joined by Sam Turner and a whole variety of guests to be announced once confirmed. Uh, massive negotiations going on uh, around the world at the moment. And of course, we're going to look ahead to the Cheltenham Festival. Uh, tickets go on sale on Friday, the 10th of February. Uh, they'll be posted, details of which will be posted in the description of the show. They are £10 a ticket. You get a free drink upon entry and the big news, there will be half-time pies of all flavours. Well, so that, That's your rider, isn't it, that? Well, you weren't going to do it unless the pies I'm arrived. I'm happy. The pie man's going to definitely be happy. I, I think actually £10 in and you get a free drink. I mean, if you yeah. have a race course, I mean, yeah. that's, that's the virtually 10 quid anyway. If this was Cheltenham, yeah. that means you're getting in for £2.50. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Yes. Cheltenham, you did, we didn't say that. Um, anyway, so... Monday, the 6th of March, the George Pub in Chiswick. Come down, meet Sam Turner in person. That's what most people are going to be coming for, to have a a signing session with Sam. We are checking that nobody's allowed in with various objects to it. There will be metal detectors upon entry. Yeah, good, good. Okay, uh, that's for another day. Time now for Racing Recap. And so we begin with news from the Dublin Racing Festival and quite a lot of drama in the very first race, Steve. Um, Lossie Mouth, who favourite for the Triumph Hurdle, uh, has looked very good so far in her short career. Um, she encountered a fair amount of trouble in the opening segment of this show. Uh, Sam alluded to the fact that Willie Munns wasn't shy in pointing out one or two bits of criticism about Paul Tannen and this applied to Lossie Mouth's path. Yeah, I, I think maybe... Maybe Willie had a little bit of criticism to level it himself as well, because the horse who got in Lossy Mouth his way was both trainer and owner, of uh, same trainer and owner as Lossy Mouth. Um, and there seemed to be a plan. Mm. It seemed uh, at, at pains to, to track the owner companion around. And when that horse weakened, 
which it did. Um, obviously, it was taken back and, and, and lost a couple of... I thought the mistake he made, personally, and I do think when you see it in all forms of racing, I think to try and make your ground quickly going around the outside is a mistake. And I think if he had his time again, mm -hmm. he would have waited a bit and then maybe, you know, made one run. And maybe, I think one of Willie's biggest criticisms that he thought he was too hard on him in a losing cause, didn't yes. he? Yeah. And there, may be, there may be some truth there. I think it was unfortunate. Yeah. And I think he probably would have won, the, you know, not the most controversial come in the world. But I thought it was a mistake from the beginning to the end, really. Yes, it was a balls up, raw yeah. balls up all the way around, really, wasn't it? From declaration time to, yeah. um, exactly. to the end of the race. Yeah. I mean, like, in Paul Tannen's defence, he didn't declare Jura Fett exactly. and then enter it. And they obviously, as Steve says, they had a plan. He was going to line up on the inside. It, Paul loves to line up on the inside, save ground, around, especially around Leopardstown, yep. be on a good horse, travelling away. And unfortunately, the stable mate, who's 125 to 1, any price on wherever you like to look, um, comes back in your lap. And that's what, it was almost a, a balls up of their own making in mm. some respects, wasn't it? I, I don't really know why she had to be in that race. Well, that, that's, that's the bit that struck me. Later on, we'll talk about another race where I do think Paul Townsend gets a, is in charge of a bit. That's the Fassel Vega, right? 100%. Which we'll talk about uh, 100%. Well. I, think, I, think, I think, you know, I think he, that wasn't his finest hour. I would give him, I'd not give him a pass, but I think he wasn't entirely. I just think they, they got it wrong. The whole team got that wrong. Yeah, and one final point. Paul Townsend's on the favourite for the Triumph Hurdle. It's the first grade one on Saturday. He's a three on chance. There is a certain responsibility on him to try and win the race. I know mm, it, absolutely. Willie, Willie's very yeah. keen for him just to perhaps not give her a hard race and leave its mark on, on the filly. But, you know, it, it's an important meeting. Everybody's looking forward mm -hmm. to this meeting for weeks on end and you're, you're running a hot favourite for the Triumph Hurdle, who's unbeaten. Yeah, maybe if he could have his time again, as you say, Steve, he, he might have ridden slightly different in the closing stages and not really left a lot out on the track at mm -hmm. Leopardstown with Cheltenham around the corner. Yeah, yeah, agreed. Having said all that, I don't think he's, whereas one or two have come the, to go to Cheltenham beaten favour with real question marks, mm -hmm. you know, after really flat performances. I don't think she's actually lessened her chances particularly. No, you know, no. She's still jumped very well. She clearly has a, you know, she's this clearly a, a very good form chance. Yeah, it's an example of enhancing your reputation in defeat. Well, she's done so. that with that effort. Yeah, I think uh, so, yeah. There despite circumstances. And she probably learned a fair bit. I mean, mm, she's had yeah. a couple of saunters round, hasn't she? And mm -hmm. mm. that would have taught her a lot, I think. Um, Willie Mullins perhaps thinking that she was taught too much uh, in the closing stages, <laughs> but we will only find that out when she reappears for the Triumph Hurdle, for which she's 7 4 favourite, Blood Destiny 11 4 second choice with Bet365, and Gala Marceau, obviously, who beat uh, Lossy Mouth on the weekend, is 4 to 1, all, 8 to 1 Barbados. Yeah. Bet3? So, I think, think Willie's safe, others, probably, yeah. possible that yeah. he can parachute in if he wants to. Yeah, yeah. We'll, yeah. Uh, a running theme. Uh, the Irish Arkle. Ah. Uh, who, which trainer should we talk about here? <laughs> <laughs> El Fabiolo won. Uh, obviously, Willie Mullins had a whole host of horses, but it was good in the sense that a whole host of them ran because it was. I think for Willie Mullins, he's worked out his pecking order. Yeah. And for the Arkle itself at the Cheltenham Festival, it looks like we might have some clash on our hands. El Fabiolo, go. But, okay, I thought it was, I found the most interesting race of the whole Dublin Festival. Really, truly run, excellent time, and lots of horses. I think really showed what they were. For, I mean, not just I mean, do with El Fabiano, but I thought Dysart Dynamo ran really well. Didn't didn't behave sillily. I mean, he's a, he's a free goer, but he wasn't ridiculous. And I thought he jumped very well. I think we found out at the moment how good he is. No excuses. I didn't see an excuse for appreciate it, Sam, as I no, know you did. No. He jumped well. He looked to be travelling well. I just think on the day he wasn't good enough. I thought it was an excellent run uh, by the second, who mm. might end up being a Turner's horse, mm. maybe rather than Arkell. Banbridge. Banbridge, I beg your pardon. But I think in, in dealing with El Fabiano, I thought he was really good. Right. He's still got some improvement for jumping, maybe. Yeah. But, I mean, a great time. He's got a real engine and... Him taking on John Bomb for me is one of the races I'm looking forward to at Cheltenham. Yeah, it'd be class, wouldn't it? Real Absolute class. class. I mean, it, they've, they've fled round. It's probably the fastest novice chase that me and my colleagues have, have recorded yeah. this year. Yeah. Um, I think the circuit time was 25 lengths quicker than Galapin de Champ. Mm. Um, all right, seven fewer furlongs, but mm. still for a novice, yep. second time over. Was he had six, seven yeah. starts in his yeah. career yeah. as well? That's yeah. all. Unbelievably yeah. talented horse. Great run from Banbridge. I thought that was. Quite a clever, unlike high definition, I thought it was a clever ride from JJ Slevin. It yeah. kept him in his comfort zone a little bit. Yeah. We could have easily got him on the top, you know, yeah. 
on his head, really. Three out, two out. If he'd have tried chasing that pace earlier, yeah. let him come home strongly. We know he's got Cheltenham form. He's won the boys' race. He's won the grade two before Christmas. I thought yeah. it was a sound enough trial for the Turners yeah, on good ground. Okay. Yeah, uh, very important. Yeah, I agree. Uh, that's looking back at the Irish Arkle. John Bond, 11 to 10 favourite for the Arkle. El Fabiolo, 9 to 4. Who wins at Cheltenham? I think the betting's about right. I think at the moment, John Bond is probably uh, the slightly slicker jumper. At the prices, to be fair, I would prefer El Fabiano because I like horses who I think in my mind are going forward. I mm. thought there was, although he was excellent on Sunday, Saturday, I beg your pardon, I still think there is some improvement to come from his jumping game. He's got a good jump yep. in him, but I still thought he was a little bit novice yeah. And if that gets better, I think he's a serious danger. Uh, El Fabiolo for me. I think we see John Bond this weekend. Warwick's yeah, I think so, yeah. Weekend. The plan, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I think yeah. the one, the one sad thing from that article is it's probably the last time Daryl Jacob will sit on the horse. Yeah. Um, yeah. Unless, you know, injury or suspension yeah. uh, intervenes. But yeah, I, I was really, really taken with the race. I think it's a very, very strong piece of form. Yeah. Appreciate it. it was four from four around Leopardstown yeah. going into it and got left behind. Yeah. What I like about the makeup of the Arkle clash is that the way John Bonner's raced so far the fences has been, in fact, a couple of times I've heard as well is that he's gone out in front to use his pretty neat, slick jumping mm -hmm. and his pace. And El Fabiola, that would put El Fabiola under pressure, I imagine, which I think would be quite exciting to see whether he rises to the occasion. Should be fascinating. I can't believe they'll go any quicker than they went on Saturday. No, no Venice. You know, I mean, they might run Dice like Dynamo in the race. You might, but whether you or, argue, not, might whether or not you'll be able to reel in a horse like John Bond. Um, Possibly would not. be a different question no, yeah, that he's going to get asked. Yeah, yeah, okay, fair enough. Um, so that would be an exciting element of Very. the festival. Uh, also on the weekend, on Saturday, uh, another favourite for the festival was in action. And this time it was the Gold Cup favourite, Galapin de Champ, who won the Irish Gold Cup. How impressed were you by, A, what he did? And then I've heard it from a lot of people, Steve, what he actually did even after the line, yeah. considering what's coming up uh, in terms of stamina test in the Gold Cup? I think as a race, it was slightly unsatisfactory. They didn't go very quick. Um, so I think and you could argue individually, it may not have suited Statler, it may not have suited you know, others. I didn't think it suited the winner. But the, you're right. I, I was really struck. Out of all the two days, I didn't see a horse finish with more energy. He was still tanking 30 seconds after the race. Mm. So... In my mind, I think a more strongly run race on the day, he'd have been more impressive. I think he's, I think he's got a real class element to him. I, I love the way he can now be held up. Yeah. You know, I, I wasn't entirely convinced on his reappearance. I thought he was better. I thought he really was settled this time. And I, I'll be honest, I, I don't see three and a quarter being a problem. I think he might yeah. be a plus. So yeah, yeah. I was surprised he was pushed out by the odd firm. That, that, I yeah. mean, what did he have to do? Well, yeah, I suppose so. I mean... You know, the horses that finished behind him were the same horses that he was lining up against yeah. when they jumped off. Yeah. So they they used the second as a or the third as a stick to beat him with a little, oh, he only beat this. Well, yeah, but that, that's what he was only going to beat at the yeah. start of the race. Yeah. So, And like you say, any little issue that you might have had with him to sort of come into the end of his tether after being a bit gassy or something mm -hmm. over three miles, there's not a sign of it, was there? Not at um, all. Yeah, whether he'd want a real slog fest at three and a quarter on deep ground. For a horse that's got so much pace, I just think it's a brilliant horse, isn't it? We've yeah. been championing on about him on here for about 12 months now, what a beast he is, and I think you're just seeing full evidence of it now. Uh, well, sorry, one thing, is, well, you get prices. He strikes me, and I'll probably be proved completely wrong. I don't think you need to, to rush about this, because I think there is, you know, all the build-up to Cheltenham. I think people mm. want to oppose him, for whatever reason, mm. because of the three and a quarter miles, and they'll, 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 they'll be... So the price he is now... Five to four with Battery right. 65. I think with the, the, the markets come the day are very competitive I think mm. this drives me of one which will definitely be competitive yeah. so I think if he gets it I think it won't be a million miles short than he is now there's a bit of depth in the race as well isn't there yeah. Yeah. Uh, Plutard who's not going to run and yeah. we'll just I'm go beforehand, yeah. Yeah. Brave Man's Game Protector Rats Ahoy Seniors yes. Noble Yates, yes. Noble Yates. Yeah. so you, you have got runners all in and around the yeah. sort of 8 to 14 mm -hmm. 16 to 1 yeah. mm -hmm. And like you say, Steve, I don't. How much shorter can he get without do, with sitting in his box? Unless you get a couple of high-profile withdrawals, yeah, yes, you can't see how he's going to go odds on. But it's not. It's yeah. not like you know. For example, you argue about the going back to the, the John Bond. Were something to happen to El Fabiolo, yeah. John Bond will be odds yeah. on. You probably need two or three horses to come yes. out of the Gold Cup to really na massively affect. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I think on the day it'll be a similar price to he is now, probably. Yeah, uh, I love the fact this season that Gallop Andershan in the two runs that he's had has looked 
much more professional yeah. than he ever did last season. I think obviously that's down to the team. Um, the way he ran first time up in the John Durkin, it was far more tractable. Not that he was a tear away, no. but in order to be confident of him going through his race, finishing as strongly as he does, you want to see him in a nice rhythm and settled. And I think that's perhaps one of the most satisfying things I would imagine from the Mullins angle mm -hmm. that they've got him doing running his races as he has in mm -hmm. two starts this season would that be fair completely he looks more of a, a, a you know a, more of a racehorse yeah and if he is settling he'll give himself a chance to properly express himself last year he looked like one of those sort of 17 18 year old footballers who didn't yeah. quite realize how good he could be yeah and i think now he's sort of growing into yeah. his frame and his yeah. stature and like you say he's a lot more compliant yeah um i think paul could probably put him in anywhere yeah. in a yeah. race couldn't yeah. he yeah uh, was there anything else from Saturday that you wanted to mention? Um, a dream to share is now six to one joint second favourite with Bet365 for the champion bumper. The Gleason family, very yeah. excited by that, understandably so. Because obviously facile mode, I think quite a few people like mm. that horse after for Thomas Mullins. Um, you disappointed at all? Yeah, I was a bit. I'm quite sure what's gone on there because there was talks of big money transfers yeah. and all sorts after he bolted up. Clocked a really big speed figure the first time. Very easy to back at the weekend. Mm. Mm. Hasn't gone anywhere since. Um, still running in the same colours. So I'm not quite sure what the story is there. Yeah. Maybe further down the line, you know, the like fairy house punches down might be where we see him bounce back and he might take his chance at the Charlton okay. Festival. But I expect him seeing see him in green and gold or mm. Mm. yellow and black checks over the weekend, yeah. you know. But mm. there we go. Uh, Jerry Colomb won the Silly Isle, mm. Novices Chase at uh, Sandown, remains unbeaten, 3-1 to one for the Brown Advisory. Impressed? I, I, in, in, I'm not sure I'd be keen on the 3-1 to one for Brown Advisory. I thought, I thought he did it pretty well on Saturday, and I thought, well, I, I liked. There was a the, the moment turning for home where I didn't think he was going to win. Yeah. He, uh, mm. I think he found that minimum test of stamina yeah. and still got the job done. I thought under pressure, his jumping was good. Mm. Um, so I can certainly see the distance of the Brown advisory being something that would suit him, whether he's quite good enough. Don't know. No, I'm not convinced. Ground would be a big thing for me if it dried out and it was yeah. you know, genuine yeah. good ground on the Wednesday. I know it's difficult at Cheltenham. They, they do water and you never really get that sort of ground. But um, I think he's got the propensity to get jarred up on quicker ground and mm -hmm. that would be a bit of an issue. Did the circuit quick, you know, second quicker than third time lucky, yeah. which is you know, yeah. encouraging considering yeah. it's a novice over two yep. and a half rather yeah. than the two miles. All right, we'll move on and talk about Sunday uh, and back to uh, Ireland, the Dublin Festival. Um, Mighty Potter uh, won the two and a half, two mile five furlong novice chase that obviously Gallop under Champ won last year. I'm really taken by the way this horse is jumping his fences and the way he went through the race, Steve. He's got a really impressive manner, mm. ridden with a, a great deal of confidence. Yeah, it's hard to be negative about it. I think, I th I think you're right about the confidence. I think David Russell really has got mm. confidence also. I think it's a horse he's particularly fond of, which is a good thing in jump racing. I thought yeah, I thought he lived up to his bidding entirely. He's pretty he wasn't f absolutely flawed his jumping a couple of again slightly novice um efforts. It weren't yeah. mistakes, but he got in close a couple of times. But he was pretty good. And I thought his uh, he was very, very good from two out to the line. I think he's a worthy favourite, Rich. I mean, you know, we've mentioned a horse earlier in Banbridge, or, or I see as a, yeah. some sort of threat if he gets his conditions. But I think Mighty Potter has fully established himself. I think the horse he beat on Sunday, I could see no reason at all why they would beat him, Absolutely. personally. Yeah, the only thing I'd say, that James de Burley didn't jump very well. No. So, and you've got Gellard de Mesnil in there. I know he goes well around Leopardstown, but 2-5 on good ground isn't going to be sufficient in yeah. the test for him. I mean, he's 6-4, to four, by the way, Gellard de Mesnil uh, for the National Hunt Chase. Yes, so that's... Yeah, it's probably going to be more his cup of tea, isn't yeah. it? Um, you know, Kill Crew, Iron Maximus, who looks a bit of a dodge. So yeah. I'm not sure it was the strongest grade one that we saw, but you couldn't be you know, more impressed, really, by Mighty Potter. I mean, he's got speed to burn as well. Um, jumps very well. Obviously, does you know goes left, right handed. He, you know, mm -hmm. he's got everything really. Yeah. I must just say, I hope David Russell's okay because he had a bit of a nasty fall yeah. on Sunday afternoon, yeah. and there was um, there was talk of rib and vertebrae issues. So hopefully, mm. fingers crossed, they're not as bad as first feared. All mm. right, um, thank you. Certainly uh, endorse that sentiment. Mighty Potter six to four for the Turners. Um, El Fabiola currently is in the market two to one. Banbridge, who you've mentioned, Steve is four to one. Bet three six five. Same price as Sir Gerhard. Real whacker, eight to one. Conditions are important for Banbridge, aren't they? Yeah. You wouldn't want yeah. it any softer than it was no. at the weekend. And, yeah. Uh, again, you can afford to wait. But I think he would be yeah. a threat to get it. He's, he's got the speed to run well in a, a really good arcle, but yeah. he's crying out for further, I think, yeah, ideally. Definitely. 
Now, obviously, we mentioned Lossy Mouth getting beaten at a short price. There were a couple of other turnups oh. for the Mullins team. And in the Dublin chase, uh, turn up with the short price horse, obviously, in, the, mm. in uh, dear old Blue Lord getting beaten at a short price. But Gentleman to me wins. Um, and he is nine to one for the champion chase. Um, Blue Lord, seven to one for the champion chase, mm -hmm. nine to two for the Ryanair. How do you, I don't know, how do you solve that puzzle and put it into perspective what both horses have done? Head scratcher for me, Blue yeah. Lord. Um, I was expecting a different, I thought he was really impressive the time before. Um, I think he was just flat now. Mm. Whether he bounces back, I don't know. I, mean, I, I just don't know. I couldn't, uh, I can't really explain his run. I thought the winner jumped well. Um, he's a good horse, whether he does. I didn't think the race took much winning with Blue Lord mm. running like he did. So you probably have to run to him, I don't know, 160 somewhere. Not sure he's, he's good enough to win a champion chase. But he's a good, he's a good horse and um, it, it was his day. He, he deserved to win. He jumped best and he travelled mm. well, but I'm not sure it's a great race. I thought he was edging his way down for a little tilt at the Grand Annual. Well, Until then, but, yeah. Um, yeah. Are we in danger of underestimating him? I mean, he's thumped Edward Stone at the yeah. back end of last year. He's thumped Maybe. Blue Lord. But I suppose he's caught... A couple of short price horses on off days, hasn't he? And you know, it's a bit unfortunate that he doesn't quite get the credit he deserves. I thought it was another great ride from Danny Mullins off the front. You know, yeah. he's another good week. The race has fallen apart. He's an excellent jockey. Yeah, superb, absolutely isn't he? Absolutely excellent jockey, yeah. Absolutely superb. Yeah, three grade one wins over the weekend yeah. and you know, very, very savvy jockey. Yeah. Seems to know tactically yeah. what's required in a race, sums up races very quickly and yeah. manages to react to events during a race very quickly as well. Mm -hmm. He's brilliant. In the normal course of a, of a season, were Blue Lord to have run like he did uh, at the weekend and Connection suggested he's run flat, you'd think, well, we'd give him a nice little break. Cheltenham, is it close enough or too close or far enough away? How do you, how do you play well, it if that's the case? I suppose they'll have a couple of easy weeks, won't they? And then they'll, they'll just, there's, there's no pressure really, is there? Um, he was just flat. I mean, I just spoke to you know connections of the, of the winner and uh, of, a, of Blue Lord, and he's just he was just flat. You know, that's horses, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's not alone. The, the, the champion chase field lines up, if we imagine. Mm. There's, a, there's a few horses who've got a bit to prove. He's yeah. not. He's not alone. You know, mm. do you fin forgive an Urgan Ames run last time out? Even even Edwards had been beat the last twice. I mean, yeah. you know, we can argue about the reasons why. So I think there are there are um, question marks to answer. Okay. Don't yeah. give away all the champion chase chat just yet. We're going to leave that <laughs> for a bit later in the show. Um, Irish champion hurdle was always going to have a significant bearing on a couple of races, at least, at the Cheltenham mm -hmm. Festival. Uh, State Man won very nicely. Honeysuckle fought on bravely mm -hmm. uh, to hold on uh, for a, a place position. Vorban was a bit disappointed for me in the way he ended up finishing the race off. Um, first of all, Steve... State man, how serious a challenger is he to Constitution Hill? Um, if Constitution Hill turns up as Constitution Hill, the best state man will be with second, by a considerable margin, Okay, in my opinion. I'm not sure I'd go a considerable margin, but because I, I, I think he's a serious horse, state man. I think in mm. any other year, I think he'd be you know, a very worthy short price favourite for the champion hurdle. Yeah. I think he's... A lot slicker over his hurdles than he was. Getting um, better over there. He is getting yeah. better. Um, took a bit of pulling up as well. Um, I thought it was a real smart performance from him. Um, but look at the context of the horses that he beat. You know, he beat Honeysuckle. <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I don't want to knock Honeysuckle because she won 16 races on the spin. But, you know, she was beating the likes of Zane here. And, yeah, you know, absolutely. And he has absolutely thumped Zane here there without coming off the bridle. Mm. You know, I do think he's a pretty exceptional horse, but Constitution Hill's just yeah. in another for level. Sake, for the sake of argument, it's just literally, just for, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm, I'm going to be stronger than I really, just for, for debate. <laughs> See, I, 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 we call you Graham Rodway next. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think he had everything, could, nothing could go better. I thought he jumped immaculately. Yeah. He, he had a complete solo up front. And uh, I wouldn't say he was completely easing I thought he was ridden out to the line. Not ridden out full through, but he was kept going. He's beaten Pied Piper six and a half lengths. He's beaten Zanny Year eight lengths. I, I, the most I could get him up to, I, most in terms of an official figure, the most I could get him up to is running to about one six five. If you take a really positive yeah. view the, you know, of Zanny Year's run, 
That's a I long way I behind think, Constitution think Hill, still, isn't it? I, I don't think it will get within five lengths of them. So that, that's my. Uh, I think we're talking about a very, yeah. very, very good. There'll be plenty horse. of markets offering your prices. Well, that's that, the only. Yeah. yeah, in indeed. Yeah. I'm hoping. Uh, I mean, I, I I agree. I don't think anything's going to get anywhere near Constitution Hill, just, assuming just, he turns up in in good form. There's oh, always the horse right. They're animals. Like yeah, yeah. Well, we've seen that over the weekend, haven't we? Exactly. Yeah. Sorry, Sam. The point I was going to make about honeysuckle. Why wouldn't you go and make the running on it? I, I, Saturday, yeah, Sunday. Yeah, yeah absolutely. That was the only way for me that you could get State Man beaten, really. Yeah. Um, mm. You were never going to beat him for toe, I didn't think, over two on good ground around level no. stand these days. Yeah. No. Um, so what's the story with Honeysuckle now? Mares, retire. Imagine briefly that you were owning Honeysuckle. What would you What would you do? I, I'd retire. I, I can't see a, what, what's the point of a dual champion hurdler um, one of my complaints about Cheltenham have too, how many opportunities there are to run. Mm. You know, you're now saying I can't win a champion hurdle. But I know I'll go for the mares. I, 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 I don't feel comfortable with that at all. Yeah. I think you know she's been. You know, people were lauding her on 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 on, um, on Sunday. I think it's a, a good way to bow out. I cannot even if she won the mayor, what's she going to gain? But I, I don't personally. I don't think she would win the mayor's either. Mm. But um, I. I'm, I don't like the race being there, and I don't like the fact that she had the chance of having it. Really, you know. Mayor's hurdle. No. No, no. no. I mean, not, <laughs> there's other races I'm more keen on, um, but not running, not having. But I don't see why a dual champ. I think it's almost demeaning for her to go that okay. route. I wondered about that. You know, we were talking about it on Sunday afternoon and a, and a little swan song at Punchestown or something. But she, if they want to get her covered this year, I think she's, yeah. she, that, that's out of the equation, is it? By mm. April, I think yeah. you have to be. Um, yeah, I can't really see the point. I mean, they were, they're talking about not running the champion hurdle because Honeysuckle gives her all in during races and they feel that could be risky. I think if you're starting to feel like that, you know, yeah. if you're starting to contemplate retirement, yeah. then it's yeah. probably the time to retire, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, and like Steve says, there's probably nothing really to be gained by that. And if they want to breathe from her, she's had a fantastic career. Yeah. Her constitution is probably her biggest asset. Um, the fact that she's been to the races on 16 occasions and won every single one of them, and then has run creditably in defeat, beaten by a couple of good horses this year. Yeah. Indeed. I, I agree. I, I would be the same. I'd, I'd happily uh, wave goodbye to Honeysuckle, the would, racehorse. Would Marie's Rock, Epiton, Love Envoire, just to name three of them, there, would they have been beaten much further in the race on Sunday, do you think? Is it, is it like that, you know, the, 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 her second mm. at the weekend is so much better than... What Marie's what did it Cheltenham or Lavin? Well, so the ep yeah. epitome in that race would be would have been would an have interesting, interesting. Very, opposition, yeah. wouldn't it? Very, very. She's been in terrific form this season, mm. even so though she's been beaten <laughs> by Constitution Hill. Mm. Just it's, a bit. Because every time she's run, Nicky Henderson has been pointing out went in defeat by uh, Constitution Hill. How well Aidan Coleman and Nicky think that mm -hmm. Epitant has run. Mm. Just to highlight what we are dealing with at the top of the market. Yeah, I think the champion so. yes. hurdle. Um, anything else on Sunday? And, and there are a few. I'll let each of you go on potentially uh, Fasal Vega, who I know, Steve, you alluded to earlier. There's Gaelic Warrior, Fun, 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 uh, won nicely mm -hmm. in the Mayor's Bumper. I mean, Fasal Vega, I imagine, um, would have been a big shock the way it all unfolded to some people. I think it was a poor ride. I think I think um, he and um, High Definition, you know, seemed to take each other on a goal too uh, too fast. So that was disappointing. Having said all that, I was disappointed that Fasal Vega didn't last a little bit longer. Mm. Thought he was cooked three out. Mm. Um, I, th I thought that was that was. I think he, he he has a fair bit to prove after that, and I do think it would be uh, wrong to underestimate the winner there, who was I thought was very impressive and travelled like a, a top class horse and yeah. then mm. established him. As a genuine supreme rival, uh, runner, I would say. Ilete Tom, yes, mm. uh, who is four to one at the moment for the supreme with um, Bet365, Marine Nationale, two to one, Fasal Vega, seven to two. Um, yeah, he, he looks as though he's turned his career inside out. I think the, the sort of application of the hood mm. and the fact that he's jumping a little bit better now. Um, I think Danny Mullins getting on him as well. Hasn't mm. been, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hasn't been a negative. Um, Obviously, there was a little bit of a fright for Faso Vega at Leperstown over Christmas, yep. wasn't there? Yes. Where he did threaten a little bit and yep. was kicking myself yesterday for not at least backing him without the favourite in those mm. markets yesterday because it's the same form line. And mm -hmm. yeah, as we know, you only need some, as we saw with Garcel, uh, the, the Spring Juvenile winner. Yep. Yeah. Um, so I, I was really, really taken. I mean, the, the circuit was swift. The overall time was 
incredible as you yeah. would expect because they, yeah, they yeah. went a million over the first three or four hurdles. I have a certain a little sympathy with Paul Tannen here. If you, if you line up on a horse who wants to go and make it, you're on the rail and then something comes down the outside. It's a big ask when you're on a, mm. a short price favourite to think, okay, go on, then you go, rein back and come back in and around him again. Yeah. Um, so I, I got a little bit of sympathy there, especially when you're on something it's that quite you think's Hill a beast. And Golden Freeze, though, was it? Yeah, I mean it was suicidal, obviously, yeah. wasn't it? But I suppose there was enough opportunity then when High Definition crashed out to get a breather yeah. into Fasol. Yeah, yeah, I think so. And he was, I don't, you know, you're not saying he's a bad jockey. I just think he got it wrong. Yeah. I don't, and to be fair, Willie Mullins made it fairly clear. Yeah. That was that was harsh, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, we, just, uh, we shouldn't ride him like a machine. Maybe we should ride like ride like a racehorse. Yes. Mm -hmm. no, like a machine. Yeah. Um, but in that, I and I, I, I accept that Paul Tannen might feel. Uh, chastened by it all. But it's quite nice to hear the honesty of a trainer, I thought, from Willie Mullins mm -hmm. saying, this is what I truly believe, that my jockey could have done better. Yeah. Because um, very often trainers come out and understandably they will defend them to the hilt. Um, but occasionally it's like to hear the, the real honesty of what's going mm -hmm. on in heart and mind as opposed to... Mm -hmm. I wonder if there's a little bit of a sort of an overspill from Saturday's events before. with Lossie yeah. Matthew. Yeah. You know, yeah. It was probably... The patience was a little thin after yeah, that. Maybe yeah. that contributed to it. And yeah. I think with these trainers, obviously, they work with the horses. They, they want to see them win like champions if they yeah. think mm -hmm. they are champions. And when they don't, it's a big letdown, isn't it? Yeah. But mm -hmm. not yeah. for Danny Mullins, it wasn't. No, no. Royal Ascot, Gosden de Torrey, yeah. Dublin Festival, yeah. Mullins and Townend. Yeah. I mean, in fairness, Mullins and Townend didn't have that bad a weekend. So no, 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 what's no, wrong no, with no. a little bit of uh, niggle here and there? Um, was there anything else from well, the... you said Gaelic Warrior. Gaelic yeah. Warrior, yeah. I think in terms of ability, I think the horse, was it 143 runoff at the weekend? Yeah. It's clearly 150 plus horse. Yes. In, and in that regard, you can see why he's got prices for... Um, Four to one for the Supreme, seven to two for the Ballymore. But you you really can't jump right handed like that at Cheltenham, right. uh, markedly. When he markedly, was and it's not the first time he's done no. it. So I mean, done it at Cheltenham last year, um, and that was on the new course last year, I think. Anyway, but either way, I, I I'd be very very worried about. It. I'm no question the horse has got the ability to to go well in either of those two races, but I'm not sure that Cheltenham is less convinced. Bad. Um, yeah, about what circuit I, time is on a par with the mayor's race, the first race. Right. Um, overall time wasn't special, like you say, shifting out. I think the Ballymore, for me, would give him a bit more opportunity just to organise himself a little yeah. bit better at the hurdle. I think the two-mile race, they could go a good gallop and it might just get him on his head a bit. Do you think he would organise? I think he's one of those. I think he might always jump right. Always do it. Is, yeah. Is it it's, yeah. It's, it's not the first time, as I say. That's the way he adjusts, isn't when, it? When he's in company, he's fine, isn't it? But when he sees a wide open yeah. space, then he's jinking, jink. But yeah. he, he puts himself right and he might just have enough ability that he overcomes it anyway. But maybe I think there's one or two more compelling cases yeah. in Supreme for me, yeah. uh, other than him. More professional horses. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one I want to mention was... Uh, Affidil, yeah, yeah, um, who won for Paul Nichols up at Musselburgh, two out of two. Not sure where he's going to go, whether he will go. I mean, Paul Nichols doesn't. He think. will. He will go. He okay, will go. where's he going? Triumph. Triumph. Uh, Sixteen to one. With Lots Petrus. more to come. His trainer tells me. Lots more to definitely. Sixteen to one for the triumph. Would it not be considered for the Boodles? Just out of interest, because he's going to get a mark this week as it's in the mid hundred and twenties. I did pose a question if you'd be tempted by the Boodles. And he wasn't. Know? No, no, fair <laughs> enough. Got, fair enough. I just think he, he, I got a very forward defensive. I know well, that's fair enough. I mean, he's fair looked enough. very good in two runs at Taunton and Muscle so looked, far. Loads of talent. The yeah. horse. loads of talent. Paul might have a raft of other horses for that. Might absolutely, yeah. absolutely, absolutely. Okay, so that's a, a wrap on racing recap, um, and we're going to start our weekend preview in just a moment. Okay, just before we get into the weekend preview, want to let you know of uh, Bet365's ITV Racing offer. If you back a winner of four to one or more, place a bet on the next live ITV race and get your money back if it loses. That's money back up to £50 and applies to the first single bet placed. Bet restrictions and T's and C's apply. New and eligible customers only. So Sam, Steve and I are going to look ahead to the weekend. Newbury, of course, is the main focus of attention. And the Betfair Hurdle, Steve, is the horse that is the race that I think um, everyone's going to try and find the winner of, or whether they do or not. Uh, depends on what you think of the Emmett Mullins trained favourite, who's had two runs in handicaps. Yeah. Um, yeah. Farley Bro. Yeah, two for two since joining him. Um, I think he'd be able to carry on good ground. Uh, handicapper has given him 
seven pounds, I think, for his last win. Um, it's very easy to make the case. I mean, I think it's, I think he's short enough, personally. I think he's quite, a, you know, you can make a case for the number. The key to the event is a very unusual Betfair hurdle in that we are talking about the threat, certainly, of, of, of no worse than yes. good ground. Mm -hmm. It could even be on the quicker side. I think if you are approaching this race, I think your first port of call is to be try and find horses that you're confident actually want drying ground. Okay. Uh, so you look at Filey Bay's record. He's won on good ground at yeah. Doncaster. Yep. Yeah. Good yeah. to soft at Wincanton. Um, but the strength of those two races, Sam, in comparison to what this horse will have to do yeah. mm. on the weekend, it's, mm. it's chalk and cheese, isn't it? Well, it is. But as Steve says, this race could cut up quite dramatically. We've got 45 entries at the five day stage. We're not privy to the latest acceptors yet, but we know with this stable that they are capable of you know, plucking rabbits out of hats yeah. uh, and horses that start off what looks, you know, a very reasonable handicap mark can leave those behind in no time whatsoever. So, Indeed. Um, and the fact that he's going to be comfortable with conditions, this has been the plan for a while. JP McManus owns him, you know, the ducks are getting into a row. Not, <laughs> yeah. not, I'm not sure I could back him at his current price. Yeah. Um, and he's still got plenty to find on what he's actually achieved speed figure wise in this race in comparison to one or two others. But, I just think that you've got to be very wary of a horse of this profile from this stable. You most certainly have. Yeah, uh, uh, absolutely. I'm she, nodding away. Yeah, not <laughs> well. He is obviously unexposed as a seven-year-old, but similar comments apply to Jin Coco for Harry Frystow, wouldn't you yeah, say, Steve? Yeah, I'm a big fan of the horse. Really, I think when it really impressed me when he won last year. Uh, was it Fontwell? I think it was Fontwell. Mm. Anyway, he won in, in tremendous style, but an okay or nothing great. You can argue about completely what he achieved, but I thought he jumped very well. And the next time you saw him, he turns up at Punchestown, the 25 runner mm. handicap. And again, he jumped absolutely superbly in a big field. I thought, okay, he's got a big race in front, I'm thinking. Mm. So I'm thinking ground, yes, he goes on the ground, big yep. field, definitely. And I think he actually ran better at Cheltenham than um, he came second, he ran well. But I've just more than made the point, one of his assets is he's a very good jumper. Mm. And that was the day, and he jumped about two hurdles. Yeah. I mean, I don't <laughs> yeah. know how it's many a flat it was. race, basically. Yeah. It yeah. was, good, and he, he still ran well, but I think where he was almost crying out yeah. for another hurdle, the you know, the twister horse sort of got away from him and won, won in good fashion. Now, he mm. needs to be better than that, but I do think he's only had five, six runs in his whole career. And uh, as much as anything in the race, I'm happy with the conditions and uh, mm. all things being equal. I think he's pretty sure to run well, whether it's good enough, but I think he'll go, I think he'll be in the frame. Yeah, agreed. You know, good spring form, good ground form, jumps well, capable of coping with a big field and yeah. has been targeted at this race. We haven't seen him for three months, fresh, well. Yeah, absolutely. I think 135 is a very fair handicap mark. You know, yeah. They only nudged him up four for the Great Wood Run. Yeah. Okay. So we're, yeah. we're we're interested in the top two in the market. Oh, yeah, yeah, we've hit me up with some some others. I love it. I don't know, the trouble we're uh, well, we we're recording three hours yeah. later. Yeah. These horses aren't running. I like the Chris Gordon run at Auckland Risk. Yeah, um, likes him as a hurdler. I think he's got. I think he'll be a long term a better hurdler than Chase. They've been chasing this year. He's not the biggest horse in the world, and he's run fine. He's yeah. run a race. He's run okay. Uh, but he's actually rated seven pounds lower, I think, it's over hurdles. I think there's unfinished business. He definitely goes on good ground. Um, he's got a I wonderful he, attitude as well, isn't uh, he? Super. And I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm a bit of a fan of the trainer. Yeah. I think when he targets horses for certain yeah. races, I think he's very good. Um, so he's not a massive price. But mm. I thought he was a, a serious player. But I'd say he may not even be in Chris Gordon's plans that he runs him. But um, presumably he gets an entry. I think he'd yeah. be a very interesting runner. Okay. Yeah. Anything uh, else? And, what he's done, as you say, over, over fences this year has shown that there's still an upward curve to his yeah. career profile. Um, I think Paul Nichols is going to run two. I think he's going to run Rabot. Um, Hacker de Plas. And Hacker de Plas, uh, not Isio. Is the ground to worry for Hacker de Plas or not? Well, exactly. He's got but heavy or soft ground would be his best one. All, all of his form almost, Hacker de yeah. Plas. Yeah. yeah. Um, Colonel Mustard will want rain. He, he was my original, yeah. One, yeah, one of my originals. First Street, even with the weight, mm. very sweet on him if he yeah. goes. But I think... They might be toying with the Kingwell hurdle. Oh, okay. It's interesting because right. I do think he's a big price for the champion hurdle. Yeah. And yeah. like 15, 66 in a place. Yeah. And I, I could see him sort of sneaking into third. If you yeah. look down the list yeah. of the champion yeah. hurdle, yeah. Honeysuckle doesn't run. And it, yeah. it sort yeah. of falls apart a bit in behind you know, charge of this world. And you've got First Street, who's finished up the back end of State Man in the County hurdle. Yeah. yeah. One's 11 to four, one's 50 to one. Yeah. Yeah. So, I absolutely um, see that. So I'd yeah. like to see him in this race, obviously with the, the Jerry Field and run 
good ground, um, class act. I don't mm -hmm. mind top weights and handicaps, and especially these if they've got the ability. Then mm -hmm. um, I would be interested in him really at sixteen. But but trying to pick your way through these runners and find a runner, yeah, is not the easiest task. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah. What about you, Richard? Are you right? <laughs> I like Colonel Mustard. I mean, obviously the form with State Man and First Street, mm -hmm. etc., and the horses in behind is extremely strong. But I don't know whether he'll definitely run or not. Um, Nicky Henderson's got no ordinary Joe in the race. Mm. Um, obviously, very lightly raced, but he he ran well in the Great Wood a couple of seasons ago behind West Cork, mm. and that was on good ground. Mm -hmm. So I can see him. And um, you know, Henderson's record in that race is. He did something a bit which I, uh, I wanted to see him do, which he hadn't done uh, when he won over at uh, Kempton over Christmas. Christmas time. He found he often travels. Yeah. I, mean, I, yeah, I had him down as a little bit of a bridle hall, but yeah. to be fair, he found yeah. enough to to win, didn't he that day? So yeah, not impossible. He, he would be he would be one I'd look at outside the the, fa the favourites, mm. but um, you know, at the moment it's hard to be adamant where you want to side with. I mean, I, Colonel Mustard would be your first. If Colonel job, Mustard was definitely running room, room with a blunt instrument. <laughs> <laughs> the colonel the colonel the, the colonel the would colonel. be the choice so yeah, yeah. just so, so still, you, a, still an office wasn't he in the county yeah, county, yeah. yeah. Great, so great, he's had two runs right. over fences Super, this yeah. season they've been you know just a bit okay nothing mm -hmm. i mean he's beaten miles by el fabiola wasn't he yes um which is not totally embarrassing no, no. so it's jing coco and Orkin risk be my two heads of field yeah i'd be positive about jing coco and also first street if you lined up yeah okay uh, now, very early days, um, but the Denman and the Gainsborough are going to take place this weekend. Um, I think Hitman's going to run in the Denman. Mm. We know the Nichols horses are. You were saying Grenatine's going for the Gainsborough? Yes. And he's got another runner this weekend, that McFabulous, was got, it? Yeah, McFabulous and a novice handicap chase, which would be perfect yeah. for him, really. Yeah. He beat Tyne Hill round there yeah. before Tyne Hill became a chaser. <laughs> um, admittedly, but you know the ground and yeah. track obviously suits McFabulous perfectly. Yeah. yeah. Um, be... Anything in those races that you can think of that you want to? I mean, I, I was a big fan. Of, I still am a big fan of Hitman. Disappointed by what happened in the in the King George, but um, don't think it's worth writing him off as a sort of three. I think two... he'll be fine on the ground. Definitely mm. in his favour. Um, and there are at least similarities to this track and and, and Hay Doctor, where yeah. he was saying, but as in flat left-handed. Yeah. Um, that might suit. Might be. I do know. It looked, to be fair, one of Paul, Paul's many assets as a trainer is he's he's pretty alive to conditions and opportunities. Mm, and yeah. the three that Sam mentioned here, it's pretty hard to <laughs> to make a strong case why they shouldn't go very well. All three of those yeah. have got conditions; it'll be fine. With. Looks a smart move to to miss uh, Leopard's Town with Grenatine after last yeah, year's yes. debacle, and yeah. and go to Newbury and. Yeah, yeah, and that's probably why I don't know how much he's clear at the top of the trainer's title, three hundred yeah. grand plus, but. You know, as Steve says, spotting those opportunities and yeah. nicking races he shouldn't. I suspect you'll know exactly how far. <laughs> <he is. laughs> to the penny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like one or two of our friends in the press, press room who know exactly how much they've got in their wallet. <laughs> Always. <laughs> uh, the only other horse I'm going to mention for the week ahead runs actually on Tuesday at Market Raisin. So this, I don't know when this is, but uh, Queen's Gamble. Oh, yeah. your favourite. Yeah, yeah. yeah, she runs in the Mayor's Bumper, the listed Mayor's Bumper, which I think has been a plan for her. She was, that race was supposed to be run a while back, but it yeah. got moved. And, okay. Um, nothing I've seen over the weekend bothers me about what's coming up. At, no, really? Of course, no, I'm joking. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> I'm really nervous like fun, now. Fun, fun, fun was supposed to be about half fit, wasn't she? Fun, yeah, fun, well, fun. Yeah. 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 No, I'm not entirely convinced that it's yeah. going to be as straightforward as I thought no. when she won earlier in the or earlier in the season. Shut the form, though. Okay, yeah. yeah. Form. That's, it. that's what I'm relying on. She had, Genuinely, not many bumper horses have I seen come up the hill with the relish that she has. No? In the two yeah. starts she's had at Cheltenham, mm. she has devoured the hill both times. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Uh, There'll be a dry eye in the house. Well, yeah. and there's that as well. So yeah, yeah. come on, Queen's Gamble. <laughs> uh, so that's a look at uh, Newbury on the weekend. Tough uh, at this stage of the uh, recording it in the week, uh, but hopefully some pointers, particularly for the Betfair hurdle. Mm -hmm. uh, very shortly, we're going to get into our champion chase preview. Now, just before we get into focusing on the Queen Mother Champion Chase of the Cheltenham Festival, uh, don't forget to sign up to Odds Checker's brand new Cheltenham Super Service in the build-up to the festival. You can find exclusive insight from Andy Holding and Johnny Ward, as well as market movers, news giveaways, and even access to exclusive events, including 
a live showing of Racing Weekly in the week before Cheltenham. The sign-up link is in the description below. Join hundreds who've already joined the Super Service. And so this week, the focus at the Cheltenham Festival is on the Two Mile Queen Mother Champion Chase. Um, looking at how the market is shaping up for this race, uh, Steve, it's not one that I, I would say we, uh, we would have predicted even up until, I don't know, uh, after Christmas, the start of the oh, year? It's changed more than once. It changed with an Nergaman getting turned over at um, odds on on trials day, and it changed again yesterday with Blue Lord, who lots of people, including myself, were coming to the view that that might be the, the way to go, um, was flat mm. in, a, in a big way yesterday. Yeah. So uh, whichever angle you end up taking, you're going to have to be forgiving something, you know, to, a, to, to some degree yeah. or another. So Energumens is six to four favourite with bet three six five. Edward Stone thirteen to eight. Editor de Gite five to one. Blue Lord seven to one. Gentleman de Mere is nines. Grenatine four to one, and then bigger prices the others, as they say. Um, so would you have predicted that Energumen be six to four? Edward Stone thirteen to eight at Christmas time. Probably not, Rich. I, I'm trying to get my head around this race really, because like Steve says, you've got to forgive uh, and forget perhaps one or two performances. I think I'm sort of siding with Edward Stone at the moment because you, you're you going to get an 8 out of 10 out of him, aren't you? Like every week, right? Yeah. He's that type of player, isn't he? He's the, um, you'll chip in with the odd goal. He'll occasionally bang one in from 30 yards, but most of the time he does everything really well um, when he gets round. Um, and he's very, very professional. And Ergamine's probably got that touch of brilliance and can be a 9 or yeah. 10 out. Uh, might get you a hat trick, but he might also go missing like yeah. he did last time in the Clarence House. And sort of forgiving him... That performance is, is is harder. He's been beaten on two of his three trips to, to Britain mm -hmm. now. He got mm -hmm. beat by Altior, obviously, and beaten in the Clarence House. Um, he was a brilliant winner of the Champion Chase last year, but as we were alluding to perhaps off air, that you know you look at the strength and depth in that race and it, it wasn't great. Yep. The runner-up has been beaten, was it been beaten 23 lengths, 36 lengths and 21 lengths this year? Yep. And looks like he's heading for the Grand Annual probably this year. So with Shishkin not performing, Shaka Paswa not finishing, yeah. the race sort of fell apart and Energamin was the one to, to benefit from that. So I think I think Edward Stone at the moment for me would just get my vote. Yeah, I'd be the same. I've got a friend of mine who bangs on the phrase a lot. He said this year's form, last year's form is last year's form. He talked about jump racing. You know, I think that if you go by the, if you're judging just by what you've seen this year, for, which I know is a dangerous thing. I think Edward Stone's win in the Tingle Creek is just about the best, best. form on offer. Mm. I think he'd be a horse at the top of his game or going into the racing grenadine at a course where we know he's very good at. Mm. Yes. And I thought he'd beat him in fab, you know, really fab. That's where he's sort of come of age as a yeah. rather than a, a winning novice last year as a top notch chaser. And you've got a, two things happened since. He fell early, which is unlike him. He is a good mm. jumper. I think you can forget most, you can get that with most horses. And I think there were very believable. Slight excuses for last time. I thought Edison and she was given a great ride in front. Mm. I, I understood, in it's not a criticism, I understand the ride on Edmundstone, what they did in the day, but I think just dealing it with isolation, I think he had to make ground up too quickly to get to Edison and she. He paid for it late on, probably uh, the run may have been mm. slightly easier. So mm. not, you haven't got to factor in much to yeah. make him the better of the two horses. Yeah. And I think Edison and she might have competition up front. Um, you know, if, if gentle delay, gentle you know, horses delay, like yeah. that. So it may not be easy to to make all. So long winded way of agreeing with Sam. I think he's got less. Well, for me, he's got less to forgive. Yes. Than um, than, than the others. Whether you get excited about the price, I don't know. But I think he's. Um, I think he's pretty solid. He was a good winner of the yeah. Arkle last year. Mm -hmm. He knows he goes at Cheltenham, and he has got a piece of form this year, which is just about the best on offer. I think. Is it fair to say that the Arkle was a stronger race than the, the Champion Chase? Yeah, last, last year. Yeah. You know, I think it looked, can, it looked better for yeah, him. Yeah. Um, we just can blow it, it out. Like it, it might did. be the same case again this festival. Could be. Yeah, possible. Could be. John Bon and El Fabiolo. Chuck John Bon and El Fabiolo in this race. What, what would they? Would you? Well, I'm price them up. Yeah, interesting. Good chat. Yeah, is it? It is a. It is an interesting call. They wouldn't. They wouldn't be double figures. No. Um, no, because there's the lack of depth in the race. Again, exactly. Yeah. Because out. So we were, when we were chatting. Prior to talking about this race before we came here, Energament, Edward Stone, and Editor Digi are all nine year olds. They've had a lot of racing yeah. and it's crying out for something new. But mm. where is the something new? Mm. I mean, Blue Lord might thought prior to his disappointing yeah. run 
yeah. at the Dublin Festival. Yeah. He was the one I thought might be the one to take advantage of yeah. it. But. Yeah, for sure. And I think I think if you look at the Clowns House and look, it's a, it's a good quality race in its own right. Yeah. But it looked as though it was being used as a stepping stone for Eberstone. He was a bit gassy, wasn't he? Yeah. yeah. Um, we hadn't seen much of him the previous time, obviously, because he sort of crashed out early. So I think they very much used it as a Come way and means of just knocking the edge off yeah. Edward Stone a little yeah. bit, getting him right. Had another look at Cheltenham, jumped pretty proficiently and soundly in, in the main yeah. um, and came to win his race. It was almost the perfect ride, really. Yeah. But for Editor De yeah. attitude yeah. and resilience, he would have won snugly, wouldn't he? And we've we've touched on you know the trainer interviews after. You know, we mentioned Willie being maybe not overly happy with the cabin ride. I I haven't seen a, a losing interview where the trainer was so pleased. He was actually think, yeah. Yeah. delighted yeah, yeah. with yeah. Edward Stone. Yeah. I thought there was, it's like whatever he was imagining beforehand, it went just about as yes. well as he could have. That's actually Other him. than winning, you know, yeah. Yeah. winning yeah. a 50 grand pot. Yeah. Of course. I think he stressed, didn't he, to yeah. the rider that yeah. that day wasn't the be all and end all, I think. Yeah. Editor De Giet, are we underestimating him? Uh, because he might get taken on for the lead, because we think Edward Stone will improve past him because he was ridden to get back into the swing of things. Though he's got a very good record at Cheltenham. Mm -hmm. He's had five runs there. He's won three times. Uh, he's run well in defeat. He's a very admirable I'm, I'm a huge fan of the trainer. I think he's, I think he's yeah. absolutely brilliant with the horses. I thought, fun enough, I thought he's winning the clouds out a classic example of why it's really his decision to supplement. The, the, the owner certainly said he didn't know he'd been supplemented until <laughs> yeah. he got a phone call, which I mean, it says about trust, I know. Yeah. But I thought that was a really shrewd move to, yeah. you know, with, with the Cheltenham and the fact that his horse has come in on the back of, of being you know, a, a career best effort at the time before. Yeah. And I think... I think that was his. I think that was his champion chase. Myself, I can't see why he'll get any better. I'd be love mm. to be wrong. I'd love you know Gary to have another mm. winner there. I suspect other horses might improve past him. Gentleman to me might take him on at the head of affairs. Yeah, but, indeed. but you made the point. You know this year's form is this year's absolutely. form, and absolutely, his Cheltenham form entitles him to be bang net. You can't absolutely. see him running a bad race, can no, you? No. The way that he he jumps, gallops. And, and operates around Cheltenham. Didn't he yeah. give it a ride? Didn't you think? Oh, he's brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, really Terrific good ride. I thought yeah. that was. Yeah, superb. I mean, but he only had 50, 60 winners up to that point. And he was yeah. winning Grade Ones. Yeah. yeah. So, in summary, mm -hmm. Edward Stone is the selection for the arc, for the Champion Chase. It would be for me, I think. Yeah. Fancy him in the arc as well. I think he might. <laughs> well, well, <laughs> actually, yeah, I'm not sure. No, that, no. Was a, that was a slip of the tongue because I, I genuinely think that whoever, look, whoever wins the Arkle is going to be favourite for the champion, Queen Mother Champion Chase next year. Do you not think so? Yeah, because yeah, they'll I both be rising. That's right, yeah. Yeah, because they'll be rising 10, won't they? Yeah. yeah. And, you know, John Bonnell El Fabiolo is going to be yeah. the new two mile star. If it is one of those two. Indeed. If not, they put me on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, nothing. It'll be, It'll be one of those two. Worry. Oh, John Bond. Uh, okay. Okay. All right. So that is a look at the champion chase, the Queen Mother Champion Chase. I think we're all in agreement that Edward Stone is, as Steve said, the most solid option uh, for the two-mile extravaganza that takes place <laughs> on the Wednesday uh, at the Cheltenham Festival. Um, okay. I think we're just about in our closing segment of the show. Um, just a, a brief overview of the way things are going for you Steve because obviously you, you do a lot of betting um that's your that's your one of the things you've uh, excelled at through your through your life <laughs> no? like, where did you go into that uh, I mean, how, how busy I every week. Why, what's how busy now? are you or how much how much interest is there in, in betting at the moment or is it a case of you just hanging on waiting for the no, right opportunity I, I, no no I'm done my betting is constant throughout out the year so I mean I, love, I look forward to it for other reasons but I don't get particularly more excited about that than anything else. You know, don't tell you don't think about it, yeah. because you do. You wouldn't be a racing fan if you didn't. But, you know, if there's a... For me, if there was a better bet at Lingfield on a Tuesday or Wednesday, mm. I'd not be, you know... After talking to you, Rich, obviously, yeah, <laughs> I, I, I get stuck in. 100%. You haven't been struck by the affordability checks yet, then, Steve? I have. Uh, many, oh. yeah, yeah, several times, yeah. Um, but don't get us on that. that no, I mean, no. It's a novel, I mean, no. It's, it's, anyway. We've enjoyed our day, haven't we, so exactly. far? Exactly. So. To be fair, yes, there are been. a number of other subjects that could have potentially been on the discussion agenda today, mm -hmm. affordability checks, the whip rules, etc. But oh. sometimes it's They're just nice to talk word. about mm -hmm. racing and about betting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because that's, that's why we like it. That's why we like it. saw the sport, mm -hmm. yeah. enjoying the sport for what it is. And yeah. It's lovely that the sport was front pages. Yeah, what you should take, very brief, what did you say then, you know, there were two, we touched on this off air, so, you know, the um, 
um, the Dublin Festival we just lived through, and Willie is so completely dominant. Yeah. And some people like it, some people don't like it. You know, the idea is he's racing more competitive with them. With, with the yeah. How, what, what's your general? I, I, I was trying to reckon this. Is it a better festival because he runs all his good horses at it? Or is it a worse festival because he runs all his good horses at it and nobody else runs their horses mm -hmm. against him? Are we better seeing a slightly less quality of race, mm -hmm. but more runners and a, a wider, diverse, you know, talent spread, um, more competition that way? Or is it just great to see good horses running for a weekend, irrespective of who trains them? At least they're not all in the same colours. Mm -hmm. They're spread around a few owners. Um, I don't, I don't know what people's view on that is. Uh, when I see an article, I think it's great you're animal. Mm. Just to use it, because I thought that mm. was that for me is the race that uh, I enjoyed most of the weekend. I thought they all run completely on their merit, mm. and you learn plenty about them. Whereas if two of those hadn't run, it would have been you know, Dice like Dynamo hadn't run. It yeah. was a slightly different race, for yeah. example. So uh, on balance, I think I enjoyed the fact that they did take each other on. Mm -hmm. But I take, I, I can obviously, I can see the argument that yeah. it can't be good for racing long term long to term. have yeah. all the all the um, the good horses in one stage. I think numbers through the gate. And people watching 10, and the interest in it yeah. Yeah. suggest that people are happy to see the quality of racing that we're seeing, mm -hmm. regardless of how many are trained by Willie Mullins. I mean, yeah. personally, I'd love to see a few more British horses take the chance, but I can understand why they don't want to. I, I get it. But yeah. as a fan of the sport, I prefer to see them having a go mm -hmm. and, and not thinking that they're going to... Phil. Fair play to Phil Kirby as well. Yeah, yeah. what a good run uh, that was. Brilliant, yeah. brilliant run. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you both very much. Pleasure. Um, as always, it's always, it's nice to be back, actually. It I've is, isn't it? been a while, and, and Steve Rodden did su such a good... I've seen you. Well, well. <laughs> uh, Steve Rodden did such a good job that I was slightly concerned that he would keep it. Um, <laughs> but, you know, had to pull a few strings <laughs> to get back in the, in the, in the manager's yeah. seat. <laughs> uh, that is it for this week's edition of Racing Weekly, brought to you by Odds Checker in association with Bet365. Uh, thanks to Sam and to Steve for joining me on the episode. As always, if you like what you've heard or watched in this or any of our previous episodes, then leave us a kind review on Apple Podcasts or in the comment section on YouTube. We'll be back some, next week when we're looking ahead to the Ascot Chase and the Rendlesham meeting at Haydock. But from Steve, Sam and myself and the team at Racing Weekly, bye-bye.